Welcome back to more wizard chess. There's a brand new update here to coincide with the turn-based fest happening over on Steam. You'll notice right away the bard is a slightly different color than the rest of the units. The developers, Ben and Ricky, recently took this to a gaming event with lots of hands-on interaction, plus with uh, coverage from streamers and the like. We've learned a lot of things about how to better get people engaging with the game and onboard them and, and catch them up and, and familiarize them with everything going on. And so a few things will have changed here. I think one of my unlocks is, is now gone, potentially. If I were to go into the tutorial right now, uh, you actually have a different unit than the Lancer. I might actually stick my head in there just to quickly see if I need to do that to unlock this new unit. Uh, it also reminded people of how the map works. I don't even think that was in, in place before, which is kind of funny. Uh, there, there I, ha I have that unit. Uh, so it, it won't matter for there. I just, I think I just wanted to confirm that for myself. I've been playing on the developer branch of things, but now this has been pushed public for people to try out for themselves. And so I just was a little unfamiliar how that transition was going to occur. So your starting default party is now updated. That's a little different than it was before. Things like the fatigue system are, are now in play, just like a handful of things will have changed. Um, there was a few things like the Merc and I believe the Rogue, uh, definitely, 100%, was on move, become poised, gain attack buff for this turn of skill points. It used to be up to your skill points, it was random, but that has been replaced and the Rogue is nerfed a little bit, the skill point is lower of a starting point, but you're guaranteed that buff now, and so you can invest skill points in the rogue to make that as like comparably good as it was and you now right off the bat have the option to use a randomized randomized party we kind of buried that before you had to unlock it but i think people just came asking they want to start playing around with different team and party compositions like right off the bat he kind of reminds me of the suicide king in the sense that it looks like he's sticking that through his own brain a little bit the javelina they're ranged and they throw javelins in a straight line. As an action, target a tile two or more tiles away from this unit. Attack damage will be dealt to any enemy occupying that tile until the target's moved. As skill increases, you can target more and more distant tiles. So let's see if I move a little bit further away. My max range with that. Oh, do you know what? Alright, learning how this works is, I, I guess, a little bit different than I expected. Um, so you... Whereas the archer, the archer can't move at all, this character is specifically... So if I let that turn run, he should attack it? Hmm. Maybe I'll play around with, like, making sure I know precisely how this is set up. So I should be able to attack there. But the archer, their whole thing was they, like, can't move. Whereas the javelina... And I, I guess the javelina doesn't continually keep attacking that? Maybe not quite? So you either move or you attack, is I guess what it comes down to. I thought maybe you could move then attack, but no, I don't think that's quite how it goes. Let's put it into practice. We'll use the default welcome party, and we'll take that out into the, the wilderness of the mountain here and see how that all goes. Let me just double check. You're basically screwed. <laughs> I mean... These guys attack diagonally, so if he moves up, actually right now both of them are kind of screwed. And so I think my solution here is actually going to be to use the Javelina. The Merc will kill that gnome, and if I contribute some attack here, I can get rid of the Imp as well. There we go. Much safer. Feel much better about that. I was quite concerned about what I was going to be able to achieve there. The Javelina only throws in a straight line too, so it's not like I can try and attack diagonally or anything like that. I'm going to lure the Sheldon into this little corner, hopefully. Oh, you're not going to make that dumb of a choice. That was all I wanted, was for this stupid crab to make a stupid choice. How dare you run. I think I'll have more options if I position myself there, because it won't matter what direction he moves, I'll be able to close it. Perfect. Happy with that. <laughs> the last episode I recorded, I got spanked in like the opening thing there. 
Uh, I could add further range for your attacks. Ooh, it revealed a new reward to me already. I guess I'll push through in that direction and go and scoop some of that up. Let's see now. Ooh, I could use you, take you out from a distance. So the, the Lancer isn't gone. The Lancer just ended up being a little bit complex for people who were first learning the game. And so rather than overwhelming people with a, a unit type that they were having trouble, like, interpreting how his skill used, the Javelita feels a little bit more intuitive. That's kind of what the hope is with that. I... None of you are quite positioned where I need you to be. Uh, even... No, I, I will get a two attack boost from the dog there, so it'll be perfect to take out that imp. I, I was trying to be careful with that one, not letting the dog chase away anything. I didn't even... I'm so accustomed to the Krabbies not mattering that I just let that happen. That's on me. Well, at least I got to show off the Javelina a little bit before they were gone for good. Oh, shoot. The Skellum can't. Can't get involved here in a way that will actually overwhelm me here. All right, let's slip you in. You'll get a little bit of a boost, not quite, but oh, still, still managing to stay just outside of what I'm capable of doing. I want to get the bard and the dog lined up. Oh, well, that was clearly the worst thing I could have done. Certainly in the running for worst things I could have done. Almost anywhere I go, I you know what? I could hide back there. <laughs> I think I will. Then you at least can't surround him. Because otherwise he was going to get his clover shield broken. I don't want to deal with that. Not right away. Not even short term, long term. Uh, I like need maximized stats. In order to, to get... Like I, I need... A boost from the bard and the dog in order to overwhelm the sh either of them. Either of them. Crap. So, I have to hopefully... Ah, that's, that's exactly the thing that was going to screw me over. Now I have to play this ridiculous dance here. Oh, but you can just move the skellum. But they can't... They didn't do enough because I had just moved. Okay, this is insane. I should live here because only one can attack. Oh, damn you. I need him to get out of the way <laughs> so I can put him there. Okay, Bard, can I get you in, in the running here? Uh, let's do it this way. Perhaps I'm rather than forcing it to be one way... That's so my fault. <laughs> that's, um, that's a run-ender. Ah. Uh, let it get the best of me pretty quickly in that one. Play again. Get me back in there. Right when I think I've got this game, I don't want to be so cocky as to say mastered, but it's pretty humbling. <laughs> um, do you know what? I'm going to create... This little threatening box in here. If you try and bring anyone up into that space, they won't be able to do enough damage. Uh, see, he was wise. He steered clear, didn't want to go in there. And I can take out two with that. So that was uh, not intentional to build towards that specific move, but hot damn, it, it worked out quite nicely. Let's, uh, let's box that guy in. He'll have nowhere to go. And so, within a turn, regardless of what he does, I got him. Then hopefully move them into a, a more vulnerable position. It'll take a couple turns, I guess, to get anyone over there. You... I'm going to move you up. Yes, that dog. I should have thought about that and pinched that in. But I'll, I'll get the inspiration from the bard. Such poor, <laughs> poor planning. 
I'm aware. I'm aware the dog does that, and I still let it happen so, so often. All right, just let, let that play out. Similar start. <laughs> Similarly not great start. Plus defense for each friendly unit of the same class deployed. Well, I guess one of the mercs is who is going to actually benefit from that. I will attempt to survive one more combat before I try to hit up a shop. Uh, let's, that seems like a little bit of a better vantage. That gnome is already dealt with. I shouldn't have to worry about it. And then from there, there's nowhere they could really set themselves up. Yeah, everyone, everyone will be like out of range at that point. So I'm going to start bringing him around, around the back. For this exact move. Pretty nifty, looking okay. Can definitely make do. That's not really going to lead anywhere. Uh, I could also do this just for funsies. Oh, the dog, the inspiration there. I didn't bother actually doing the math. <laughs> I just kind of hoped it would work. Let's chase you around a little bit. I assume the computer will choose to... M no, okay, if, you, if you're not vulnerable, then I guess it can just sit pretty and wait it out. But, chipping away. Now I'm kind of in a goofy position where... All my actual units had kind of this wall of my own enemies interfering. Uh, so let's allow the dog to bark it away. <laughs> let that play out one more time, I guess. Yeah, let's just let that happen. Boo. Now, now there's no turning back. Now I've, I've effectively won already. Not even close. We'll see how this shit goes here. I could add an archer to just for the sake of having uh, a separate ranged option. I could add a Merc because he would get a boost. I don't know if that's like the most valuable thing. Maybe I add one of each. They are both metal, so there's no real concern there. Though having the element directly next to their name is actually very useful. I can't recall if that is a new addition or not. It feels like it would be. Let me snake into the reward room and juice up a little bit in there. Added attack. Ooh, that can be really valuable attached to the archer. I'll just put it on a, a merc. Keep you alive. The archer. Yeah, it's really, really easy for the archer to get knocked out with only four defense. I'd rather keep that protected. I'm going to push towards that other reward room. I don't think I could position anyone to take out that unit. They wouldn't have to move much to be able to take out my archer there. I can't move the archer. I oh, There's that up there, but five, five, he won't be able to get to anyone. No one's vulnerable there. You in the corner are pretty worrying. I feel like I'm bordering on doomed to lose at least one unit here. I gotta really, like, mitigate that. There, there'll be no, like, damage boosts or anything. I think if I move forward, I can fortify myself a little bit so no one can get surrounded. I think that's the safest positioning, if I'm reading this correctly, because they'll only be able to attack forward. Totally defensive move, but I think that gets me through it, so I'm I'm safe there. And now I can start messing around with the archer a little bit. Um, I would rather take that one out first. Like, if I take him out, the gnome can't even move to there, so it won't matter. Let's just do that. Let's just be rid of that one skeleton. Get get one unit off the board there. That was kind of the move I expected him to make. Uh, now, I will shoot myself if I do that, so maybe I don't want to be doing that. Uh, can you just move? You can only move diagonally, so I don't even think he can position himself there. Oh, but he could move over. This skeleton would move over and he would be killed. 
so there is still a little bit to worry about there. Let's just take out the gnome from like a safe location. Easy does it. Okay, it helps. It helps to take your time and not pretend you know everything and rush through the game and, and get all of your units killed back to back to back. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought it would go that notably smoother in that scenario? <laughs> Very limited supply of Vim right now. I don't really need Dinkerlim the dog. Is that what his name was? <laughs> then lurk him. I... Uh, yeah, I'm not that excited about that unit, but whatever. I'll, I'll pick it up. It's a freebie. No, I definitely need more money before I try and go to a shop. Oh, this is, uh, dense. <laughs> So, the gnome will get killed by the merc. I could contribute an attack. Oh, not from, from the archer. From the archer I could contribute attack to get rid of that skellum. I think that'll take two things off the board. And then he won't really have the option to do anything too worrisome. Didn't have strong enough units. The dog will boost... Oh, but it's a Javelina, so it won't, won't actually attack there. Uh, the Javelina could kill this thing just for funsies <laughs> without actually having to move. Oh, and the Javelina still does a melee attack, actually. That's pretty nifty. I dig that. Uh, it provides some pretty solid options. I assume <laughs> the Skeleton will run back up into there. I guess, I guess it's trying to protect itself. Well, here's a fun thing, right? You could line them up there. Qua crazy flexibility as a unit. The Javelina might actually be like really, really good. <laughs> Upgrade defense by two and skill. Ooh, I could give you that extra range. The extra range for like the standard archer is the direction I'm going to go. If I could attack boost the archer, that would be useful. I guess I'm doing skill, a skill boost to the dog, maybe? Let's do the Javelina, and rogues are just kind of always good to have. There's still that fatigue system in place, and so you can see all of these characters are pushed way back. Uh, so whatever I go to next, it's going to prioritize this little lineup. So I still actually having two support units in that sense is pretty good, because if one is fatigued and gets pushed out of your party, then you're still likely going to bring one with you. And having at least one is, like, pretty valuable a lot of the time. So, I am going to do some pretty major damage here. Because when he gets poised, he will raise his attack to five. Ah, that won't really make a major difference. The higher, a skill of two would have been all it needed to take out the imp with this one simple move. But I'm still just going to go this direction here. Okay, I was holding my breath there for a second, a little hesitant on like how that was actually going to play out. <laughs> Played right into my hand. Alright, now I, I probably can just let you die. Uh, yeah, let's just go way over the top though, just for funsies. <laughs> Get a nice decisive kill. Uh, he'll start growing lonely. And so it's truly not going to take long before they're in a position where the archer can just pick them off. A couple more turns, I guess. Ah, uh, and they're falling outside of the, the range that I have, so I'm, I'm moving the rogue over there too, just in case. That would do it. Out of range anyways. Give a boost just for fun. Alright, gaining that momentum that you need somewhat early on. Extra skill for the rogue. And extra attack, maybe? It's just such a versatile unit that that ends up being quite valuable. Bonus rogue and vindictive. Temporarily gain two attack after being attacked. Who has a lot of armor? I don't know if the Javelina, if they attempt to overwhelm them, be able to fight back a little bit. Two shops, and the rest is all just combat, so I'll do one shop first. Two extra skill, so I'll add that to the other rogue, make them extra deadly. I don't think I want either of those units. 
who's lacking in defense here? I really like I, I really like the approach of trying to like round out my party. With that extra skill, I'm going to throw them into the fray quite a bit. So I think having uh, a little bit more protection there will be useful. Maybe the game's being a little stingier with Vim. It seems like it might be. All right, there's so much crisscrossing going on with the rogue <laughs> that <laughs> they're dead, they're dead, they're dead. <laughs> so nearly dead. But if I just throw one attack on there, that'll be four units gone all at once. <laughs> yeah, that was a little excessive. That uh, that worked out quite nicely for me, I'd say. Let's... What can I even get in, involved there? There we go. Nice, versatile. Cross the board. Oh, you're carrying a negative stat. Temporarily lose two defense after being attacked. I probably have to be like a little bit mindful of that. Add an attack. Sure, you can have that, Javelina. Mm, do I want to clear out every battle? It's probably excessive. Probably don't need to clear all that off. Let's see what we can work with here. I think I'm going to just move you up to take out that gnome. You'll get enough of a boost to take out the Sheldon there. That's, uh, that went quite well. <sighs> Gain attack after being attacked, so I wouldn't get anything out of that just yet. That's, <laughs> that's so sick. <laughs> that, the two, I gained two from being poised. And I gained one more from the bard? Are we calling the full circle adjacent at this point? I'm going to keep an eye on that and see if his attack raises to seven. Yeah, so the full circle is what we're calling adjacent, and I'm honestly not confident that's always what it was. That might have been an update. Ah, uh, Gerard the Boring. I like introducing things slowly in this series, so I'm going to skip them. I'll show off the monk in a, in a totally different run. They're a super funny unit, and one of the most strategic. Like, you can set up some really cool stuff with that unit. A little bit more defense attack than usual. I probably just want to leave you there to take care of that unit. I was tempted to run in there to get rid of the Skellum, but the Gnome and the Imp together would take them out. I'm just going to move the Javelina up here to take out that Imp, and then I'll let the enemy come to me. There. Now, now they're singling themselves out, and uh, I, I basically don't have to worry about it uh, whatsoever. Let's set up the other rogue there. So, regardless of where they end up sending themselves, I'm, I'm pretty well set. Bonus attack. See, even though the rogue was nerfed, it's pretty easy to make the rogue very, very strong. So I think that was the right call, was to like lower that pretty significantly. And let's give the other one to the archer. At this point, maybe I do just sweep my way through every possible combat. Mm, this is a very small party to take in here with me. I'm just looking around at my defenses and everything. I should be fine. Do you know what? And I won't even move up. I'll just take the, <laughs> the gnome out from a distance. So I'm like even a little bit more safe. So that's a done deal. Yes, you should. You should be fine. Uh, and four against six, it'll be, it'll get raised. It still won't quite be enough. Uh, yeah, I basically just end my turn, I think, and see what he chooses to do with that imp, and then I can plan around. Lonely, lonely. Oh, he he just ended his turn. I think he was camping out down there. Lost some health. Easy pickings at that point take on the slightly bigger battle, slightly smaller one, and head on to the boss. Oh, my first champion. I actually have not even been, like, holding out or paying attention for that. Six damage, four damage will take out this ten defense thing. That is just kind of lucky placement for me. Uh, four will take out that gnome. You two together will take out that Sheldon. <laughs> Could you be of use... Somewhere around the board. You'll get an inspiration boost, but that's it. 
So not quite enough to take out anything there. I think that about does it. Uh, even with the dog. The dog's not really in range of where it needs to be. Whatever. I'm just going to shoot this thing. It doesn't matter. And take out a whole swath of enemies. Pretty handily. <laughs> without any input from myself. And then I can worry about it. Let's line you up there. I think that actually would be the best. Seven and seven. And and the archer's still shooting, so that works out. And you're gonna immediately start taking your lonely loss, so that champ never even really got involved. Was not a big concern. Lots of him. Permanently gain one upgrade to a random stat after surviving. Ah, it's not going to make a big difference at this stage anyways. Extra for the archer. I don't really want that dog. It came with like a negative stat. Look around the room. No scary attacks that I need to watch out for. Oh, my rogues are both resting. That actually does kind of suck to lose. Let me just... Oh, out of range. Not actually going to happen. In that case, I'm going to I'm going to start moving over towards this cluster of enemies without engaging anything directly. And I think I I save myself a little bit there. Took kind of a a similar strategy, did ya? Not trying to put yourself in any real harm's way there. I knew that wasn't going to kill anything. Not really my concern at the moment. Just taking cautious setup moves. Oh, you coward. <laughs> Just you wait. I'm I'm coming in hot. Let's Let's deal with one enemy here cuz now there's there's nothing he can move in to to do really. <laughs> this one juiced up merc is gonna- oh, and he's the veteran too. So if he survives, he's just gonna get stronger anyways. Nope, he's a coward. Cowed. <laughs> that must have been something else then. Maybe the thing I killed. The archer, I guess, can't- still can't do it, which is just kind of silly. Uh, and I honestly don't care if you just beat up on him. I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'll just keep picking people off. The odds that this guy corners any enemy was between low and zero, so pretty, pretty A-OK. -okay. Dog will bark into my arrow. Excellent. A little bit more Vim. I'm gonna just buy, like, every upgrade there is in the shop. That's usually just kind of a fun way to go about things. The rogue with a big boost is an option. A dog that gives big boosts maybe is kind of fun to play around with. Uh, Archer, Merc... He loses defense after being attacked, so there's a little bit of like a weak point there. You know what? I guess I'm doing a Lancerless run. Just... it's all about the Javelina today anyways. One champion during the boss battle. That's a little little bit scary. Did the art change for the orb? It maybe did to stand out a little more. I think there was some tweaks made there. I am going to take a fairly easy move here. There's some shit going on with this champ and the, the skeleton here. They both have bias blood and they just have nothing going for them. Really, really harms... <laughs> Court Mag's whole deal here, doesn't it? Doesn't doesn't have much threat to pose <laughs> when his units are that weakened. Oh, damn, man, down to zero attack. Genuinely can't do anything with it. That's okay, because I'm chipping away two more. Try and stop me, big dumb goon. And one orb down. Oh, you got Vim literally for blowing that up. 
and two treasures? I guess? Uh, now I don't want to run in and kill the orb too quickly. As soon as I move the rogue, it's, it's a done deal. There's no real point doing that yet. I'll take out this zero attack skeleton. His his attack is going back up now that now that I've kind of opened up some things here. This might be a hair sacrificial. Um If Cormag weakens him in some way, then he's boned. Otherwise, like it, it's not gonna matter. <laughs> so I was okay with losing one unit though, because everything else about the, the boss battle has gone well. So there he goes. Now, now we've lost him. And if I had one more attack on that archer, would have been fun. Would have been a fun way to end things. Uh, the dog is basically dead if Cormag goes for it. Let's see, so I, I basically am just trying to open up an opportunity to slot the rogue in there. <laughs> it's just a nice, decisive kill. Oh my god! <laughs> did, did I? Is that only how much defense I had? I was not expecting to get charged quite like that. But, by moving, I should raise my attack and the inspiration. Oh, <laughs> that was dicey. Oh my god, I got thumped hard there. I did it. I'm the best. Hot tamale. What the hell? Vim. A skill upgrade, skill, skill, attack, doesn't matter. Oh, I could have converted those to Vim, I think. Uh, I believe there was new traits added in this patch. Eager, at the start of combat, gain two attack for skill turns. Oh, okay, so if you have one skill, that lasts one turn, three skill, three turns of added attack. That's a good one. That's very beneficial. At the start of combat, gain four defense buff, four skill turns. Four? That's like generous. That's a, a lot. Uh, I'll unlock a party type, the warriors. So if I return to title, uh, maybe that's just a thing that the javelina hasn't been added to the title screen yet. Whoops. <laughs> but I do have the javelina. Um, I just wanted to enter this room here. So you have the welcome one, the random, the core four which still has the Lancer, and the Rogue, the Merc, the Dog, the Adventurers, has the Cleric and the Archer in there, the, the Warriors has the Monk included, and there's a handful of other ones, just to encourage you to try different ways of playing the game if you're not really certain, if you feel like you're not getting a lot out of the Welcome one, or if random feels a little too risky or whatever the hell. And I think, ideally, we want to have it where there's a point where you've unlocked enough to have a customizable like if you want to go in there with four dogs that's insane but that option should be available just so you can mess around with it like why not you know just just to try just for funsies <laughs> well there you guys go thank you so much for watching go check out wizard chess for yourself it's ongoing continually updating adding things tweaking things improving things uh, in the next update you're probably gonna see some pretty major changes to UI a lot of this is gonna be updated and changed just continually trying to raise the bar set new standards and improve things and integrate any feedback that we receive thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again see you.